Merry Christmas, Revolution Church. Yeah, yeah. All right, we are so glad to be here. I'm going to have to speed this up because I, I really wanted to press Santa to be out of here from 5 to 6 so you can spend time with your family. Man, it's one of those times of year. I feel like you can get together with them and you can talk about Jesus. You, I love it because we're talking about giving gifts and some people give gifts and they don't really know what's going on, but that's an opportunity for us to talk about gifts, you know, the gift that, that God gives us individually and the ultimate gift of Jesus, right? So that's where we are uh, today. I hope to, my goal is to uh, give some clarity about this time of season or maybe some understanding about what maybe you just sang about tonight. But uh, I just want you to know up front that I believe that God's orchestrated you to be here no matter how you wind up here, that he's a loving God and he wants to, he wants to change your life. He wants to interrupt it for good. And that's what we're going to do tonight is look into that. Um, that uh, we're going to be in Luke chapter 2. And we're working on a light situation. That's down the road after the new year. But tonight they're going to be on the screen. But what I want you to hear, if nothing else, even if you're just looking at the screen, is that, that when hope collided with humanity, that was Jesus. And when he did that, he brought hope to us as a, a, a human race. That we don't have to live the way we choose to live or not, not really uh, uh, understand with uh, life without him. So... Here we go. Uh, what it is, I'm going to throw out a churchy term real quick just to get this out of the way, is, is that is a gospel, the gospel message. It's very churchy. I didn't understand it. Uh, I needed somebody to explain to me, but they just didn't. But that just simply means good news. Jesus didn't even invent the gospel. The gospel was uh, an, an announcement. It was an announcement to um, the community that something amazing just happened or is about to happen. And, and don't blink because you'll miss it. It's the gospel message. It's good news. It's going to change your life for the better. So we're going to jump right in. And this is, we're going to begin in verse 8. That's where we're going to start tonight. Um, that's where the, the angels were out in the field with, and they ran into some shepherds there. And you may have heard this from uh, Charlie Brown Christmas. It's, it's where I first heard the gospel and got saved and tied all in one time. I was four or five years old. But anyway, Charlie Brown, we're in uh, Luke chapter 2. And here's what it says. <clears throat> that night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding, keeping watch, looking out. That's important. Looking out for their flocks of sheep. And a few verses prior to this, the Bible tells us about Mary and Joseph and that Jesus had been born. They had had a baby in, in an unlikely situation uh, for uh, the king of kings, and, but they just had this, ba this baby. And, and I don't know if some of y'all have had kids, most of y'all, you know, you kind of announce that. You kind of send out a an announcement, a birth announcement. You go to Party City and pick out some Superman announcements, whatever you want. But you're announcing something awesome and you're, you're, you're declaring that, that, that you've had a baby. And, and, and what we see here is, is that uh, Jesus has been announced with angels, with angels. And he's God's son, so he can do that. And what, one thing I want us to pick up on before we really get rolling is what I want you to notice, first of all, and you've got to nail this down, it puts everything in perspective, is that he revealed this birth announcement to the shepherds. Stinky, nasty shepherds, the, probably the uh, uh, McDonald's janitorial job of the time, I and mean, just something nobody wants to stay at long, uh, kind of insignificant, not on the inner loop, certainly not wealthy, um, just rejected and forgotten most of the time. But that's exactly, that's exactly who um, uh, Jesus' birth was revealed to first. Um, so what I think is this is, an, this is a message for you and me at this time of year to know that salvation, and this is where I'm going, that salvation is, is accessible to all people. That's the point I feel like God was definitely wants to get. Number one, that Jesus came from heaven to earth for our sins to live, uh, experience our joy, experience our pain, live, die on a cross, rise again, so that we could have forgiveness of sins. But um, I think... The other thing he wants us to really realize is, listen, this tells us that he didn't come just for the religiously astute. He didn't come for uh, pastors and reveal himself to pastors. Uh, he did just the opposite. And, and what that tells us is, and we've got to get this as a church, and I hope even if you don't go here, you don't like it, that you're following Jesus, that you hear that message that the gospel be accessible to everyone. Anybody, everybody, no matter what their circumstances are, no matter what their lifestyles are, not, no matter what their behavior patterns have been, that the gospel is accessible to all. That's our job, individually and as a church. So um, 
I love this question, and people are asking like crazy because Gastonia is really not used to uh, church plants. They're usually established churches. They're brick buildings and steeples and carpets and baptismals and things like that. And people just don't get it. They they say, you know, where do you meet in there, and what's it look like, and you know, why there? I love the question. It, it allows me to talk about ac- accessibility to the gospel. We feel like God has absolutely laid this on our lap so that we can be accessible to people. They're already here. There's already people coming here. There's already people that show up. They're already planted right in front of us. And all we've got to do is throw a few chairs out and read some gospel, maybe a little bit more light, but that we make the gospel accessible to them. So that's why we started the church. That's why we're here. We, we actually, the other night, did a little count just from a six by eight radius block, there's 11 churches. I'm sure they're awesome, probably overwhelmed. But some people would say, well, there's so many churches there already. There's already so many churches in the southeast. Um, and this is what I, I thought. Um, I'm going to need some water. I can go ahead and tell you that. I'm sorry. I need some water. Um, this is what I wrote down for myself. A facility does not equate accessibility to the gospel. Don't mistake buildings for access to the gospel. We have to go out of our way. It has to be intentional. It has to be in the front of our mind to make the gospel intentionally make it available to people. So, um, here's the other thing I want to go, and I'm going to press here for a little while, is that we catch these guys looking over their sheep. They're looking over their sheep. They're watching over their sheep. They're looking for their safety. They're looking for thieves. And I really feel like if we're honest with ourselves in the deepest parts of our our soul, that we're all looking for peace. Thank you. That's perfect. He's the MVP, by the way. I really got to put these candles out. I don't even feel I can see those, but there's candles. All right. That we're all in a process, kind of a, a looking and searching mode. That's what we're doing. Um, that we're always looking for relief from this life that that seems to beat us up daily. Looking for financial relief. We're looking for love. I start surveying the people in my life. They're they're looking for love. And they're looking so hard that they, in most cases, they enter into relationships chasing that only to get hurt. They're looking for success, not really uh, trying to be more satisfied, but only finding out that a little bit more just never enough so I see people chasing these things they're looking for relief relief from pain and relief from people and the hurts and I couldn't help but think think that a lot of times in our situations we are overlooking could we be overlooking what can bring us peace what can bring us love are we doing that And here's what verse 9 says suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them they were terrified. Actually, this helps me loosen up a little. There's the King James. You've got any King Jamesers out there. King Jimmy says this, that they were sore afraid. They were sore. Sore afraid. I really love that. Uh, it made me feel like, man, now were they working out? You know, were they been to the, to the Y? But what that meant was that they were having overwhelming mental pain. They were overcome with being visited by this angel. And the angel says this, and, and again in King James it will say, Behold. And behold is one of my favorite biblical words, churchy words, because what it means is, behold, check this out, look at me, this doesn't happen often, don't blink. This is something you may never see again. He says, I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. And he says, the Savior, yes, the Messiah, yes, the Savior, the Savior. He didn't say good man, he didn't say good teacher, somebody to lean on when you... Uh, might run into a a, a difficult time, but a Savior, a Savior, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David, and you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others. So what that means is, this angel was joined by all his angel buddies, a vast amount, an army, would have been really overwhelming to them, and this is what they did. They were freaked out, but the angel and his angel buddy started to sing and praise God. And this is what what they sang. Glory to God in the highest. 
Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth, earth to those whom God is pleased. And I'm not sure if you caught this night, you better. I underlined and highlighted and bolded highest. And I wanted to talk and press down on that. I said, and God, I need a message. We're trying to do things radical here. You know that, God. It's going to take something radical for this community, radical for this time in, in our lives. And Revolution Church, God, we want to draw the, the least likely, the people that are shoved to the back. Go and be that hope for them. God, God put it in our path to, to just, God, be open to your will, God, that we can just be bold about and different about the things that draw people to you, God. So he had me nailed down on, on highest, the highest. And this is what I want to tell you, that the Bible says that he is the highest. He's higher than any uh, academia. Okay, we're all smart. We chase college. We chase master's degrees and doctorates. But the Bible says that he's all-knowing. And he's higher than creation. Isn't that awesome? He's higher than that. He spoke it out of his mouth. So that makes him higher than that. He's the highest. He's higher than the shame we carry. He's higher than the scars that we have that most people don't know we have, if anybody. He's higher than our financial status. We can be as rich as we think we are, but he owns it all. He's the highest. And he's, you know, what this means is the implication of this is that he's worthy. He's worthy for us to put our, our faith in him. He's worthy. He's worthy. Anybody agree with that? He's worthy? Okay. That's something to cheer about. And this is what I'm afraid people do. I'm afraid they, they add, add Jesus on. They just add him on to their life. I think it's rampant. I think we call it apathy. It's killing churches everywhere. Not just adding them on part of your life. Like you would an ornament on a tree. Just adding them on. But make him the highest in your life. Higher than your bank account. Higher than your career. Listen to this. This things. Higher than your family. Higher than your job. Higher than your desire for love. To be loved. To get into a relationship. And making him higher than, than your, your love of your goals and your pursuit of happiness. He's worthy because he's the highest. Does that make any sense to me? To you, to you all, because to me, it, it, it really, really took me down to my knees is, is, is that he's, he's the highest. It's such simple words, but they penetrate if you let it. And here's what I know some people are saying and thinking. You know, that sounds great. I hear that God loves me unconditionally. I hear you saying that. I get that. I get that he, that he died for our sins. I get that he wants more for my life. I get that he designed me for so much more. But I don't know where to start. You don't know my situation. You don't know how bad it is. You don't know how far from God I actually am. And this is what I want to tell you because it's in the very next verse. It says in verse 15, When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to, to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. In other words, let's go meet Jesus personally. They received an invitation, a personal invitation to come see Jesus. That he's the highest. And they had to decide for themselves. This is what they said. They couldn't help but do it. It was presented to them that this is going to change all of mankind. You don't have to live in shame. You don't have to live with unforgiveness of sins. And they took this step, and that was to, let's go see, let's go meet Jesus personally, let's encounter him for ourselves. And here's what so many people mistake, you know, I'm going to clean myself up a little bit, I'm going to stop drinking, I'm going to stop shooting up drugs, I'm going to stop um, uh, being the, the, the personality that I am, and then I'll come to God. Then I'll present myself. And they've got it backwards because he wants us to come in. And this is what the Bible says, and I intentionally keep it, where people can understand. Because there's a lot of other churches that, 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 that cater to people that are, are uh, religiously astute. But here we want to make the, the gospel simple. A simple message. And here's what it says. This is for God loved the, so, the world so much that he gave the most radical gift of generosity that anyone has ever received. And it was his son.
Because God doesn't want you to live another day. He doesn't want, want you to carry. You're, th- you're carrying things that you weren't meant to carry. You're stressed out about things that you weren't meant to be stressed out about. But he's drawing you to him, and that's his offer. That's his offer when you come to him. And here's what he can't handle. Here's what he can handle. You know, I can handle your sin. I can handle those things that keep you from me. I can handle the sin because I'm God. But here's what I can't handle. I can't handle you leaving a building tonight. Leaving a building tonight without giving your life to me. He, doesn't, he, he can't handle that. Because we weren't designed. We wasn't, it wasn't in his plan for us to do that. His design was to live for him. To give him every area of our life. And what, I, what I'm afraid so bad is people have a, people have a regurgitated faith. They live on the coattails of their parents because their parents maybe were a charter member of a church. Or they're very committed to Jesus, following Jesus. They ride their coattails. They think they're grandfathered in and they've got it all wrong. And there's another set of people that a lot of people I know, great people, gosh, the best people I know. And this is what they think. It's so sad. But you know, you know I, I hear you, Richard. I hear what you're saying, that God has all these things. But you know, I'm a pretty good person. I try really hard. I give. I don't pass a Salvation Army thing unless I put in some change in it. You know, I feel like at the end of the, end of the day, at the end of my life, that, that God's going to measure that out. As if there's some moral scale. You know, I, and I would agree with that. That would be a legitimate phrase to say if that were the case, that if there were some moral scale. But I've got to tell you this gently, that there's not. In Scripture, there's nothing that tells us that there's a moral scale. But it's very clear on what God does measure, and that's what you do with His Son. He measures where, what you did with His Son, Jesus, whether you accepted Him or rejected Him. And to not accept Him is to reject Him. That's what's weighed out that keeps people from making a step, making a decision to go see Jesus on their own. But tonight I believe this, that, that God orchestrated your steps to be here. And I believe just like the angels, he gave an invitation. I mean, just like to the shepherds, an invitation for you to come see Jesus. I get overwhelmed really thinking about the, the individuals in my life that uh, it, it really distracts me, um, that I love so much that I don't give a clear invitation to, that I'm, I'm afraid of what they might think, that they might push away, might even push them further away. But here's what God promises to do. His word tells us that, man, I'm going to work on those people. You know, tell your people for them to do the reaching. Richard, you do the preaching, and I'll do the changing of lives. I'll handle that part. So he, he wants us to be bold with that and to run from the fear that comes with telling people about Jesus. Because there's friends and even family members that, that I do, and I'm, I'm sure most of you do. You just, you just kind of let them go. You just kind of let them slide, hoping that somehow they'll come to Jesus. That somehow they'll make a decision to follow him but the Bible clear, clearly tells us this, that if we believe in our heart that God raised Jesus from dead, that we'll be saved. But if they don't know that, they don't know that they can be connected to God. They can leave tonight, people in this room, feeling connected to God. They don't have to feel disconnected. That their sins can be forgiven. God wants us to tell people that. He wants us to offer an invitation so that we can know now, we can know now whether or not we're going to be uh, in heaven with, with God and have an abundant life here. We don't have to wait for the pearly gates that we can know now. I mean, here's the deal. I think a lot of our people, uh, uh, they're, they're awesome. They're good at extending an invitation to people. And not just information. Because here's information. If I want you to come to my wedding, I'm saying, hey, my, my wedding's in September the 5th. You should come, drop in if you'd like. You know, you can remember that. 
That's information. That's when it is. Revolution Church, we meet on Wednesday night, uh, Sunday, Sunday nights and Wednesday nights. We do kids. You should come sometime. That's a information. An invitation says, I, want, I will meet you there. Will you be my personal guest? I will pick you up. I will take you to eat. It solidifies the invitation. And listen, this is the other part. Is, is it's an invitation to a celebration. A lot of times we treat church like funeral. This is, this is uh, a, a celebration of life because that's what God does. He gives life. He started with, with Jesus, and Jesus never stopped. Even 2,000 years later, people are giving their life to Jesus. He's given them new life. And I'm very proud to say of God and what he's doing here despite me Despite our flaws, we've all got warts. We'll show them to you. We're limping around. We break wind. We do all those things. But despite that, man, 70 people's been saved through Revolution Church just in the past 11 weeks. I think you should at least golf clap for that. Yeah. I want to speak a little bit to the people that are Already saved. Already saved. You, you're following Jesus. You claim that you follow Jesus. And here's what I know. Here's what I know about our people is they would never slam the door in people's face. They get when I said earlier about accessibility to the gospel. They would never do that. But listen, when we share, when we fail to share the gospel with people, when we fail to invite, extend the invitation to invite them in and tell them the good news. It's not bad news that we're giving them, it's good news. We, we begin to make the gospel inaccessible. And I know nobody would want to do that. You never, you never want to find yourself slamming the door in people's face. Here's what the Bible says in verse 16. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph and their, and their baby was lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about the, this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished, but Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God, all that they had heard and seen. It was just a, as the angel had told them, and their lives were changed forever. All because they were extended an invitation and they responded to an invitation. And then we, what we find is that they, they, they couldn't help but tell other people, which is a theme throughout God's Word. It's a theme throughout Scripture that, that, that an invitation is extended. People respond to it. Their lives are changed forever and they go and tell. The woman at the well. So many others. And what that did, it drew people in. And it just wasn't just information about God. It was an invitation. And some of y'all are being extended an invitation tonight. And Gary, if y'all can come on up, we're not going to be too much longer. We wanted tonight to be a little, usually we're upbeat and, and all those things, a little somber, but uh, still celebratory. And here's what I need for you to do. I'd like for you to spend just a few minutes, in si a few seconds in silence, just thinking about the birth of Jesus, and listen to me pray. If you would do that. I don't want to go ahead and stand up, everybody. We can stand up. Father, I thank you, God, that we can gather, God, just even in a short amount of time, God, that we can come together, Lord, to reflect on the ultimate gift, God. God, we hear the message loud and clear, God, that the invitation is for all humanity, God. God, burden us for people, Lord, in this community and in this church, God, that are rejected and forgotten, God. Help them to be first on our list, Lord. God, I thank you for all the families that you've put our way, Lord, that we've been able to, to show hope for, God. And, and that we didn't just give presents and gifts, God, that we, 
we extended an invitation, God, for them to know you, God. You've blessed us amazingly. God, help us to always aim for the lost. God, they're so valuable to you, and we, we thank you for that opportunity, God. I, I want to pray for the families in this, that are in this building tonight, God. We walk in with a lot of dysfunction. Lord, that just increases the capacity, God, to receive your grace, God, that, that you would work through our situations, Lord. You would bring hope to families this year, Lord. I, I, I beg that people are burdened to start conversations, maybe even tonight, God, when we go to our parties and tomorrow, God, that we'll talk about the ultimate gift. God, you've extended an invitation tonight, Lord, to the people in this room. It's the same invitation, God. And God, we bring our mess to you, God. We lay it before you, God, without cleaning up, God. We come stinky and nasty, Lord, just like the shepherds, God. And go ahead and get us going. Let's go. Here's what I need you to do. If you would keep your eyes closed. You know, I learned in school when I, when I had the right answer, when I found the right answer to raise my hand. And I'm going to do that in just a minute. I'm going to extend an invitation. And it's your job to respond to that. I'm going to pray a prayer and see if you relate to this. Father God, I'm a stinking mess, God. I don't, I can't find the answers in my life, God, to situations, God, I, I've tried. But God, I hit, I hit wall after wall. But God, tonight I hear your message. His salvation is for me. That that's why you came here from heaven. And God, I want to give my life to you, God. But I realize, Lord, that I'm walking away from things, God. I'm beginning with my pride. And tonight, God, I want to surrender my life to you, God. I want to walk away from sin and confess it to you, God. I need a new life. I need a new chance. I need a brand new start. And I realize that can only come from you, God. I need forgiveness of sins. God, something's got to give. Lord, I don't have the answer. But God, I want an abundant life that you promise. God, I surrender my life to you tonight. If that message resonates from you and you found the answer, I need you to shoot up your hand just so that I can pray for you. Thank you. Anybody else? Father, I thank you, God, that uh, we can celebrate life tonight, God, your life. God, even more, God, we want to put our family members and our friends and people that we know need you, God. We need to, to remove uh, the obstacles, God, of the simple message, God, so that people can begin to give their life to you, God, because we're obedient to you, God. I pray for these people, God, some that, that are connected here, others that are, that are just visiting, God, that they'll plug in somewhere, God, and be a visible follower of yours, God. That they'll abandon all the preferences, God, and all the traditions, God, that get in the way, God, of people seeing you. God, we love to tell the story about you coming in a manger, God. It, it relates to so many people, God, that are down and out and forgotten. God, it draws them in, just like it has someone here tonight. Father, I thank you in advance, God, for opening doors that we can give access to the gospel. 
If you need to respond, if you need to pray, if you just need to sing, if you'll take care of that tonight, I'll be over here for just for a minute, but you don't need me if you just need to pray. But if there's something specific, I'll be available here. But more than that, I wish you would take the opportunity to worship God, that you would worship Him. Take a step in your worship. Maybe tonight that's just singing. Maybe for some of you, it's maybe raising your hands. Maybe it's just doing a face plant and just asking God to, to break through the barriers in your life and all the things that you don't even know how to pray about other than to God. Okay? Let's worship.